game operations and, and creating an incredible environment with 100 years of uh, uh, Tiger Stadium. Um, uh, hats off to them. I thought they made that um, the stadium environment uh, unique and uh, electric and, um, you know, what you want for, you know, a game day um, event. And, and then the, the two teams, um, you know, played up to that and lived up to it. It was, um, you know, certainly uh, many people were expecting maybe a similar shootout uh, to last year. I didn't think that would be the case. I thought this would be much more about, um, you know, opportunities that were, you know, going to have to come by and, and be taken advantage of. We didn't early on, obviously. We turned touchdowns into field goals or – or, or didn't get touchdowns and, and led to field goals, but um, can't say enough about the defensive effort tonight. Um, sacks, um, harassing the quarterback, um, making the big plays when they needed to. And, you know, that's what we've been talking about in terms of, you know, getting better each and every week on both sides of the ball. That was complimentary football uh, for us. And you have to do that to beat a top 10 team. And, Really proud of our, our football team and the way they never uh, blinked. They were down virtually the whole game, and they just kept playing. Uh, there was no um, frustration. It, it would have been easy for our offense to get frustrated, um, not, not getting touchdowns, but they just kept plodding along. Garrett would tell you that you know there were things that he learned. I thought he grew more today um, than at any time that he's been here. That was a growth game for him, and you may see it differently, um, but as a coach, uh, the growth that, that he was able to um, exhibit uh, through that game and at the end um, is, is going to serve him well. So just a great ball game. Hats off to, to Ole Miss, uh, but, uh, you know, really proud of our football team and the way they persevered uh, to a victory tonight in overtime. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Coach, you mentioned it was a growth game for Garrett. What what were those areas of growth that you saw from him uh, as the game went along? Yeah, I, I think, you know, being in a situation where predictable uh, passing situations with, you know, seven and eight man drops into coverage, um, you know, requires a great deal of patience and um, mobility. Uh, you have to keep the play alive. And he did that later in the game much better than just trying to, you know, throw it down the field. And as the game grew on, uh, he made some plays where he kept plays alive. Uh, and he's capable of doing that. And so we saw another version that, that kind of grew out of, um, you know, some of the, uh, the, the things that were being, uh, you know, thrown at him tonight. And, and then certainly – late in the game, the back shoulder throw, which we've been working a lot on, uh, which is, is part of his repertoire that, that hadn't been shown. And then clearly, you know, the great throw uh, that ties it up on fourth down. Just um, really, really growth that is going to, I think, skyrocket him in terms of the next level. Uh, can you specifically that fourth and five, can you just like kind of walk us through what was going on there from your perspective and what allowed Garrett to kind of – and Aaron to have success there? Very similar. They were in a two-deep uh, shell. Uh, and, you know, we're pulling the backside safety out with a corner route and then bringing the, the, the slot receiver all the way back across the field. So the first thing is you need protection. So let me just say this. You know, you can ask me all you want about the run game, um, but the bottom line is what won this game for us was our offensive line keeping him clean with no sacks and giving him the time uh, in a play like that to bring the slot receiver all the way across to the backside hash after we had pulled the safety off the backside hash. And, and he fits it in there um, with kind of a three-quarter sidearm sling uh, to get it in there. Just a um, pretty special play. Brian, throughout your career, can you think of um, any instances where you've seen a kind of a wild – high wire result like this maybe galvanize a team uh, a program well I think it's in, in many ways I think our guys need to get used to it because 
their preparation is as good as any group that I've had. And that preparation um, was, was not transforming. It, it wasn't giving us the kind of performances that I thought it would. And I was frustrated with that early in the year. The preparation was outstanding, but we weren't seeing it in the performances. They, they weren't as sharp as I thought they would be. And now it's starting to translate a little bit better. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with them just not being distracted and really staying focused on what they need. So this is a team that's, that's getting better each and every week. And sometimes that happens. Some teams come out of the gates hot and they're really good and they just get better and better. This team is, is getting better as it goes through the season. Coach, obviously a huge, huge win for you. Top 10 versus top 10 lived up to every syllable of its, of its billing. Uh, how much confidence does this give your team as you continue through the meat of the SEC schedule, Oklahoma, Alabama, and other teams coming up? It doesn't get any easier from no. here. No, and we just talked about it. I said, listen, let's enjoy this. Let's, uh, we, we, we had the 24-hour rule in effect. Let's have 24 hours. We've worked really hard for this victory. Uh, the preparation, as I mentioned, was outstanding. So I want you to enjoy it, make good decisions, be smart, represent LSU in a positive way. But here's the big but. You got Arkansas uh, on the road, and that is a tough opponent. So, you know, we got to get right back at it. In the next uh, 14 days, um, Arkansas and Texas A&M on the road, uh, it, it will be a challenge. And I think now they've got the confidence that they can go out there and – translate really good preparation into better performances that can, you know, get them the victories they need. Coach, right over here, your defense obviously played with a lot of passion and energy, but you've been very, um, you know, adamant about doing your job. Can you speak to that a little bit and what, it's kind of what it looks like when that group stays in their lane and does what they're supposed to do? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's about controlling the controllables for us, right? You know, what can they control? And getting them in that kind of mindset of, all right, look, I can control how I think and think in the right way has been a real big chore with this group and getting them thinking about positive outcomes, getting them thinking about um, one play at a time instead of thinking about the light show. It was a beautiful light show, but, you know, and the scoreboard and all the other things. And wow, that was a great set uh, of music. Um, just getting them locked in and focused on what's important, and they're, they're so much better at that than they were in week one. And so control the controllables, play with physicality, uh, and then an awareness. They're playing with a better awareness tactically on third down, red zone, um, you know, short yardage, things of that nature, and, and that's what I'm referring to in particular. Hey, Brian, I want to stay with that. Just the, the defense being put in tough situations, right? And you talked about complimentary football at the beginning of the week, their ability to respond, but they're also the ability to pressure and contain at the same time. What, what's leading to that? It, it, they're, they're just they, – they understand the defense so much better. They're doing their job. And it's, it's really been uh, just a consistency in messaging. And how do you execute at the highest level – um, when you need to, um, and, and, and to do that, y you have to be able to stay locked in one play at a time. And, and, and we were not great at that early on, and, and we're getting so much better, and the communication's better, and uh, we don't have a one play where we didn't rip through the B-gap, you know, and, and didn't let a, a gap charge go. We're, we're just much more focused on doing our job consistently, play in and play out. It's just a, it's a constant application of it that we lacked and we're getting so much better at. Uh, yeah, Coach, you could just see it on the field that these defensive players really wanted this, and you know they were you know, very you know, physical throughout the entire game. Two guys that kind of come to mind, Braden Swinson, Zy Alexander, two different parts of the field, but just what did you see from them and just how important they were to you guys well, getting this game? Well, Swinson was, you know, and has lived up to, you know, what he has done all year, a performance level of a defensive end that is – playing at a high level. I mean, he's pressuring the quarterback. He's coming up with big plays. But where we have been um, deficient is winning matchups down the field. And Zy Alexander was outstanding tonight. He won the matchups. He tackled in space. Um, you know, we, 
we were able to stay in a position where they weren't in a lot of second and shorts. And because of that, because we got them behind the chains, uh, we were able to set coverages. We were able to do some things and uh, change the look quite a bit. They had to use a couple of timeouts because they didn't like the looks that we changed to. And, and that had a lot to do with the corner in particular. And, and, and I thought Ashton did a pretty good job too. But um, Zai was outstanding, and, and he got the game ball tonight. Coach Becker, um, Greg Penn and Whit Weeks seem to play really well off of each other. What do you see from them? Well, I think Whit had how many tackles? 18? He had 18 tackles. So, uh, and, and look, 18 tackles is just virtually impossible in this, this game today. And he was all over the field. He plays with great energy, um, a great fire. Uh, he runs so well that he can cover down the field. And then Greg Penn is getting everybody lined up. He's our green dot. I mean, he is – he's just the glue. He's our glue guy for us. And it's just a great combination, those two guys working together right now. Uh, Brian, going back to when you, you referenced week one for a second, back then you talked about how the defense wasn't ready to carry the team, and it seemed like this may have been an opportunity for that. What do you think about their ability to grow and be able to carry this team until the offense gets Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't know that I'm interested in any one side of the ball carrying the team as much as I want to be you know, complimentary in terms of I think our offense can play better. I think our defense is, is ascending and playing better football each and every week. Um, and, and I think that that, to me, what's most important is guys are gaining confidence as we go through uh, the season defensively and playing with a lot more confidence, you're going to see the results. And offensively, we, you know, certainly, uh, you know, putting up 30 points or 29 points against what I would consider one of the better defenses that we're going to see this year. And that wasn't our best performance. Um, and now we're down some guys, too. I mean, we're, we're not... You know, we're not complaining here, but um, we, we've, we've gotten our fair share of injuries. And our guys haven't complained about it. They've just rolled with the punches. And uh, they, they went back out there and they competed tonight. I think we're going to get some guys back here pretty soon. Um, and I think our offense will start to pick it up a little bit. Just wanted your thoughts on throughout the night. It seemed like maybe it was hard to finish drives offensively with touchdowns and but at the end, last driver regulation, and then overtime, you finished. Can you Thank you. Speak? That's that. That's uh, you said it better than I could have said it. <laughs> Thank you, Jacques. You've been in this business a long time. It, it's um, look. It, it was. It would have been easier for us to be frustrated. You know, those that watch the game. But Garrett wasn't frustrated. Um, and and what we saw at the end was why I thought it was a great growth game. You know, he made the plays when, when he needed to make them, the big ones. Tied the game up right, right before, you know, um, the game ends and then wins it in, in overtime. That, to me, is more indicative of, you know, what you're looking for from your offense than, you know, the, the inability to, to, to put it in the end zone. We got to go back and look at the film. Maybe we got to coach a little bit better. Uh, because those players, uh, they believed that they were going to win the game. One more. You've got a lot to choose from, I understand. But can you remember being a part of a game that the only time you led was after the final play of the game? Uh, I, you know, I can't remember my, you know, middle name sometimes. So, <laughs> no, I, in honesty, I, I mean, I think that that was a game that was – one of, you know, just a few that I've had in my career that it always felt like we were, you know, one step behind and we were always trying to stay in the game. That's why I kicked the extra point, to be honest with you. I just felt like our guys worked too hard to get back in that game that I didn't want to go for two as an all or nothing situation. I wanted to kick it and get into overtime, which ended up being um, the right thing to do. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you.